Hi everyone, this is Jillian from Jewish Workshops and AISH Webinars. I am thrilled to be joining all of you today and we are extremely privileged to have Sario Chavid Rigler on the line with us. Before we get started, I'd love to see who's joining us and where you're from. So if you could go to your question box, it should be on the right hand side of your screen in your control panel. And go ahead and write your first name and where you're joining us um, from. I would love to be able to welcome you. Welcome Charlotte from Los Angeles and Shoshana from England. Welcome Michelle from Baltimore and Ella from Spring Valley. Esther from Phoenix. Esty from Muncie. Tzipora from Yerushalayim. Welcome Allison from Canada. Henny from London. Rachel from Maryland. Paula from California. Eliana from Queens. Lori from Silver Spring. Welcome Suri from New York. Um, Suri from Muncie. <laughs> Uh, Emily from Jacksonville, Hadassah welcome, Deb from Boston, Esther from Milwaukee, Nahama from Miami, Khani from New York, Kiara, uh, Clara, I'm sorry, now in London, welcome, Ruth from Brooklyn, Nicole from New Jersey, Nancy from Long Island, Sophie from Canada, Rhonda from Texas, Bracha from Jerusalem, welcome, Adina from Israel, and Tammy from Baltimore, um, Michal from England, welcome. Esty from Miami, Rivka from Muncie. Wow, there are hundreds and hundreds joining us right now. I wish I had time to get to everyone. Let me see if I can get to a few more. Welcome to all. Esther from Arizona and um, Lauren from Maryland, Sarachaya from Brooklyn, Rifki from Lakewood, welcome. Melissa from Colorado. Welcome Lorna from the Philippines and Angela from Silver Spring, Lisa from Los Angeles, Laura from Phoenix, Ruth from New Jersey, Sharon from Ohio, welcome Leah from Brooklyn and Denise from Tennessee, uh, Chaya Bracha from Israel, welcome Shira, welcome Hana from Brooklyn, Susie from New Jersey, Tamar from London, um, wow, um, Desiree from Port Elizabeth, South Africa, welcome, and Fern from Toronto. What an amazing crowd. Welcome to everyone. I'm sorry if I didn't have a chance to um, say your name right away, but we are so happy to have all of you here. It looks like women are continuing to just flood in from all over the world. We are so happy to have you all. Um, we'll most likely hit capacity um, sometime soon, so please just make sure you don't leave in the middle because I don't want you to get locked out. If you're having any technical difficulties, please feel free to write into um, the question box as well and we will try our best to help you so that you can hear and see everything that's going on today. Since Mrs. Riegler has begun giving her marriage workshop, we've seen women in good marriages, but not great. We've seen women suffering in unhappy and unfulfilled marriages, and we've seen women on the brink of divorce. But with each scenario, we've heard from our community of wives who strive for better marriages, that with Sario Chavit's guidance, motivation, and specific tools, they've not only transformed their marriages, but they've had the unique opportunity to transform themselves. So make sure to stay on the line until the very end to hear about the opportunity to join Sario Chaved week after week for an all-encompassing journey towards a better marriage and a better sense of self-worth and self-acceptance. Today's introductory webinar is sure to give you so many tools just to get your start, but like I said, you'll have the opportunity to join Sario Chaved's um, inner circle ongoing community as well and at a special discounted rate just for attending today. Plus, we have several current Kesher wives on the line with us who we're excited to hear from. They've been fortunate enough to learn with Sario Chavid for years, and they'll be sharing snippets from their personal experiences and how they've been able to dramatically improve their marriages. So we are so fortunate to have Sario Chavid Rigler joining us today. Sario Chavid Rigler is very busy as she delivers workshops around the world, is a best-selling author, top writer on H.com, and a marriage mentor to women all over the world. Mrs. Rigler has helped over uh, 2,000 women from across the globe improve their marriages, and she has ultimately changed the lives of many of them. It is my pleasure to be turning over the microphone to you, Mrs. Rigler. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much, Jillian. I'm very grateful to Jewish Workshops and Jillian for the opportunity to be speaking to you today from my home in the old city of Jerusalem. No jealousy, please. I live here inside the walls of the old city. I've lived here for 31 years and 
I'm excited to be introducing to you my Kesher Wife workshop because it's no exaggeration to say that it has transformed the lives of many hundreds and hundreds of women. I used to give the workshop all over the world. I traipsed around to five different continents. I gave the workshop live to over 1,800 women. But I have to say that I really appreciate being able to sit in the comfort of my home here in Jerusalem and speak to you in the comfort of your home wherever in the world you are. I love webinar technology. So what will we learn today? We're going to, here we go. We're going to learn the three, the spiritual paradigm behind the Kesher Wife approach, the three types of marriages, dealing with your husband's bad habits, getting your husband to open up, and renewing your marriage. Toward the end, I'm going to give you a peek into our dramatized husband-wife interchanges. The, the Kesher Wife workshop itself is a four-part, four, almost four-hour workshop that has many of these husband-wife interchanges that you'll, you'll get to hear in the next hour. The spiritual paradigm behind the Kesher Wife approach is that your marriage is a triangle, including you, your husband, and God who runs the world, and your life for your benefit. Any picture that does not include God is a distorted picture. In terms of your marriage, if you ignore God's part in your marriage, you're missing a very significant part of the picture. I'm not even going to say it's one-third of the picture. I'm going to say it's 100% of the picture. Because we, we Jews believe it's the first of the Ten Commandments, and it's the first of the six constant mitzvot. We believe that there is a God. The definition of God means he's in total control. But more than just that he's in control, the first of the Ten Commandments given at Mount Sinai says, I'm the Lord your God who took you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. In other, word, God, in other words, God intervenes in our lives. How often? Like once in a millennia? No. Once in a century? No. Once a year? No. On a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Nothing happens. No, the, no cell in your body, no molecule in the universe moves, operates, exists without the will of God from moment to moment. That's what Jewish monotheism doesn't mean that we believe that there's one God as opposed to many gods. Every child knows there aren't many gods. It means that we believe in the God of oneness, that there is no other operative force in the universe. So when something happens in your marriage, it's not just that your husband has made a choice, let's say, to speak to you in a critical way. Your husband does have free choice. We believe very much in Judaism. We believe in free choice in the moral sphere. But your husband's, the way he speaks to you is very much informed by his childhood, the way his parents spoke to each other, by what's going on in the office today, by how much sleep he had last night, by so many factors. The point is that if you are suffering from something your husband says to you today, it's because God decided on Rosh Hashanah, which is coming up very soon, when Rosh Hashanah has decided exactly how much you're going to suffer in the course of the year. And whether that suffering comes to you through your husband or through your children or through your mother-in-law or through your boss or through you know, a car that swipes you on the highway, well, however it comes to you, there are many possibilities. It says in the Midrash, God has many bears and lions. But nobody suffers anything that God didn't determine that they should have that degree of suffering for their benefit. Because your soul comes down into this world for no other reason than to metak in yourself, to fix yourself, to do your spiritual rectification in this world. We are souls that come down from the higher worlds into this physical world and we assume a body and we marry a particular man who is also a soul who has a particular body in order to do our rectification. Before we go further, I want to make an announcement. The Kesher Wife Workshop is not for women who are married to men who are abusive or addictive. 
Everything I teach works. I teach a set of tools. They all work. You'll be amazed at how fast you'll see real improvements in your marriage from using the tools I teach. But these tools are not for marriages evolving, involving abuse or addiction. Now, the definition of abuse has to do with power and control. It doesn't have to do with your husband having a short fuse or a bad temper. There are husbands who are critical and husbands who yell a lot. That doesn't make them abusive. What makes a husband abusive is that he wants to take control over you, how you spend money, who you see, how you spend your time. If you have any doubt at all, any question about whether your husband is abusive, I recommend reading the book by Lisa Twersky called I'm So Confused Am I Being Abused. She gives a very clear presentation, ask questions that you can answer to determine whether you are married to a man who is abusive. What I teach is not for you if you are married to a man who is abusive or addictive. Okay. That said, let's look at the three general types of marriages. The first kind of marriage is the Dead Sea marriage. The Dead Sea, which is just 45 minute drive from my house, is the lowest place on earth. It's called the Dead Sea because nothing can live in its waters, not fish, not even a piece of seaweed. And it's surrounded by a desert. The Dead Sea marriage is also at a low point. Nothing can thrive or blossom in the Dead Sea marriage. This is a marriage with constant conflict and friction, bad energy, anger, resentment, tension, blame, and even thoughts of divorce. The Flat Road marriage has occasional friction and tension, but mostly it's characterized by a lack of connection, lack of joy, lack of excitement and vibrancy and growth. It can go on for decades, like a Kansas wheat field that just goes on and on, boring, uninspired and uninspiring. The husband and wife live together, mostly in peace. They share children, a shoppers table, usually a bank account, but they do not look to their marriage as a source of joy and fulfillment. This is sometimes called married singles. The mountainside marriage is a good marriage. The husband and wife are climbing up together when the inevitable marriage conflicts arise. And you can see in this picture, there's rocks, there's cloudy sky. This couple works on dealing with the issues in a reasonable, considerate, and mutually respectful way. But even in a good marriage, a good marriage can always be better. No one stands still on the side of a mountain. They're either going up or going down. Mountains have peaks, but the truth is there's no limit to how much better your marriage can be. So now I'd like to hear from you. And in the chat box or question box, whatever it's called on your computer, please write in which category best describes your marriage. Is your marriage a Dead Sea marriage, a flat road marriage, or a mountainside marriage? For those of you not uh, familiar with the uh, webinar control panel, you see there, there's, a, there's a box that says chat box or question box. You write what you write in there, and then you press, uh, I guess you press send, or you press return, and it goes to me. I'm only see oh, here they're coming in now. Okay, I see Dead Sea Marriage, Dead Sea Marriage, Mountainside Marriage, Flat Road, Dead Sea, Flat Road, Mountainside, Flat Road, Flat Road, Flat Road, Flat Road. Someone wrote in all three. I mean, like at different times, you know, one week it can be one, one week can be the other, I guess she means. Flat Road, Mountainside, Dead Sea, Mountainside, Dead Sea, Flat Road, Flat Road, okay, combination of all three, Mountainside, Okay, flat road, flat road. Okay, so I think we have, Baruch Hashem, thank God, we have many, many people on the line. And I see that, you know, there seem, I, I, I don't see a predominance of one particular. It seems like things are pretty much divided, maybe, uh, maybe less than a third with a mountainside marriage, but uh, pretty well divided between Dead Sea and Flat Road. Okay, so let's look at the Dead Sea marriage here. Perhaps you feel like you've tried for a long time and everyone concerned would be better off if you got a divorce. Perhaps you subscribe to the myth that children thrive better in a divorced home 
rather than in a home with constant conflict. I want to disabuse you of that myth right now. Dr. Judith Wallerstein did a 25-year longitudinal study of children whose parents divorced. She started with these kids when they were like seven, eight, nine years old, and she followed them for 25 years. She, in the beginning, she interviewed the children, the teachers, the parents, the counselors, everybody involved, and then she followed these children for 25 years, well into adulthood. And Dr. Wallerstein found that children of divorce are less likely to get married, less likely to have children, and more likely to get divorced themselves if they do get married. They're also more likely to become addicted to alcohol, cigarettes, and drugs. Many other returns. The, the book is called The Unexpected Legacy of Divorce by Dr. Judith Wallerstein. So if you're considering divorce and you have children, now and I'm going to make a caveat here, unless of course there's abuse. Now if there's abuse, you shouldn't even be listening to this webinar because I said at the beginning, this is not for women who are married to abusive husbands, but if there, is, if there is abuse, divorce is almost always the best recourse, but that's, I'm not talking to you. Assuming you're, you're not in an abusive marriage, if you have children, I urge you to read Dr. Wallerstein's book, The Unexpected Legacy of Divorce. Am I suggesting that you stay in a miserable marriage? Not at all. I'm suggesting that you learn the tools to make your marriage a good marriage, a marriage where everyone grows and thrives. Rabbi Aryeh Niven said to me, he has the uh, Habora, personal growth Haboras with women all over the world belong to it. Rabbi Niven said to me, and I'm quoting, even the most Gehenna marriage, that means hellish marriage, can become great if the woman is willing to work. And that's what the Kesher wife system is all about. Okay, the flat, flat road marriage is lackluster, boring, lacking connection. Again, with the right tools, you can turn such a marriage into a thriving, vibrant marriage <clears throat> where both you and your husband will look forward to spending time together. I have seen this again and again. This webinar, it's called the Kesher Wife Inner Circle that I do with Jewish workshops, is three years old now. And I, I'm telling you from experience, I've seen just so many members who had flat rope marriages telling me that they have, you know, now their marriage is, is like really just turned around. There was one member, she, the first time I spoke to her, because part of the package is you get a one-on-one -on -one private conversation with me. And she, so when I spoke to her the first time, she told me that she was going to drop out, she was very busy, and her husband really just didn't have time for, to spend time with her for the marriage, you know, he was very busy, they had several children. And uh, I suggested, I'm very big on pushing date night, which is something, we have a whole science of date night. We tell you how often to go out on a date with your husband, what not to talk about, what to talk about. We have a whole list of questions to bring up during date night to, to create emotional intimacy. But so, she, so I said, you know, get him to go out with you. Just a walk. And here are the, here's the, follow the rules of our date night rules. So she, she got him to go out with her <clears throat> and they both had a really good time and a week later he surprised her. He said, we haven't spent private time together this week. How about we go out tonight? She was in shock. She told me she was totally in shock. But I had seen this again and again. Now the mountainside marriage is like a garden. <clears throat> you can plant a beautiful garden but if you don't constantly tend to it, water it, pull out the weeds, what's going to happen to your garden? Too many women who have been married for 20, 25, 30, 35 years start to notice that their marriage has lost its luster. If you are willing to work and you have the proper tools, you can create a great marriage. Famous quote from the great sculptor Michelangelo, you know, he created this beautiful sculpture of uh, David. You can see it in Florence. And, uh, and he explained how did, how did he create this great uh, work of art? He said David was always there inside the slab of rock. He just had to take away the extraneous pieces of rock. But to take away the extraneous, extraneous pieces of rock, you need tools. He couldn't do it with his bare hands. 
So that's what the Kesher Wife Workshop is all about. It's a series of tools to get you to take away the extraneous and get to the core of the great marriage that is there waiting to be revealed. <clears throat> so now let's take a look at some of those tools. One big issue that wives complain about is their husband's bad, is their husband's bad habits. So whether it's the small annoyances such as the proverbial socks left on the floor or major behavioral problems such as stinginess, a quick temper, or his general lack of interest in the marriage, women suffer from their husband's actions or inaction. Do you have an example of a bad habit of your husband that really bothers you? Please put it in the, in the question box or the chat box. What is one habit of your husband that really bothers you? Someone saying smoking. Someone saying he hates he hates when kids jump. I I love it. He screams. Someone says he cracks his neck. He can't make decisions. He's always late. He falls asleep every Friday night. Someone's here saying alcohol. I said in the beginning that if your husband is addicted, this workshop is not for you because what works for everybody else won't work for you the same way with somebody who's alcoholic. If your husband's really alcoholic, I suggest you quit the workshop and go to uh, Al-Anon and learn how to deal with, a, with a, a husband who's addicted to alcohol. Okay, he can't make decisions. He, uh, he's reserved and quiet. We're talking about the habit of your husband that really bothers you. Anger. Always using his phone. Well, when I, good, I'm glad you mentioned it. When I say if your husband's addicted, this workshop is not for you, I mean addicted to alcohol or um, alcohol, drugs, marijuana, pornography. I don't mean cell phones. All men are addicted to their cell phones. Okay, irresponsible to the extreme, someone's writing, constant criticism, curses, bad language, criticism, he snores, anxiety often forgets to put things away after using them, publicly spitting, late smoking, seems like a lot of people here are smoking on the list. He tells me when and what I should be doing. You've got to watch that. I'm, I'm worried about when you say that. Is, that, is, is he a, a, the definition of abuse is power and control. I'm, if you, as I want you, the person who wrote in, he tells me when and what I should be doing to read the book by Lisa Kutorsky. I'm so confused by being abused. Okay, getting back to more, uh, more mundane bad habits. Um, Quick-tempered voice, table manners, impatience, procrastination, bad mood and criticizes. Okay, I can't go in. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have a lot. Fortunately, we have a lot of women on the line. Unfortunately, every woman has something that bothers her. So picks his nails. The, the nails on his hands and feet, he's fat, doesn't shower often enough, burps, okay. So the big question wives ask is, how do I change my husband? I'd like now to introduce you to the Kesher Wife approach to solving this problem. Some of you have been to marriage counselors. You're familiar with the psychological paradigm. The Kesher Wife paradigm is totally different. It's based on spiritual principles. For example, as I mentioned before, the basis of Jewish belief is that God runs the world. Jewish monotheism means that there's one and only one operative force in the universe. So human beings do have free choice in the moral sphere to choose between right and wrong, good and bad, in terms of our own thoughts, words, and actions. But what actually happens to us is determined by God based on what God knows is best for our spiritual rectification. And that's the purpose for which our souls come down into this world. So a corollary of this principle, that God is the only operative force in the universe, is what I call the inflow pipe and the outflow pipe. Every one of us, as it were, has two pipes connected to us. The outflow pipe is our own thoughts, words, and actions that issue from us. The inflow pipe is everything else. 
everything that happens to us could be the loss of a client or a job, a check arriving in the mail, a co-worker insulting us, your mother-in-law praising you or the opposite, and the way your husband treats you. All of this is inflow pipe. Everything, I'm going to repeat it because this is a very important principle. The outflow pipe are your, is, is your own thoughts, words, and actions. The inflow pipe is everything else. It's a spiritual truth. Please listen. This is one of the most important things I'm going to say today. It's a spiritual truth that we have 0% control over the inflow pipe, and we have 100% control over the outflow pipe, our own thoughts, words, and actions. So the hard-to-accept truth is that you cannot control your husband. The only person in this world whom you can change is yourself. So take responsibility for what you can control, your own thoughts, words, and actions. One of our mottos in the Kesha Wife Club is, the only person you can change is yourself. But if you change yourself, you'll change your marriage. And I've seen that happen for virtually every woman in the Kesha Wife Club. For example, there was a woman in the Kesher Wife inner circle who complained to me that her husband of 22 years never gave her anything. And in counseling this woman, I discovered that she had a serious problem in receiving. Her father had made her feel that she was unworthy of receiving anything because he actually did this. He calculated every penny he grudgingly spent on her food, clothing, and other necessities. She was one of two daughters. And he actually sat down and calculated how much he spent on them every year on their food, clothing, and everything. Terrible thing. Terrible. So when this woman worked on herself and she learned to graciously receive, lo and behold, her husband started to give her presents. For her birthday, he served her breakfast in bed and he took her to the jewelry store and told her to pick out anything she wanted. When she changed, her marriage changed. A friend of mine who's been a marriage counselor for over 20 years told me that usually couples come to her, but sometimes only one spouse comes. And if that one spouse changes, the marriage changes. Now, I'd like you to think of some area during the years you've been married where you have tried to get your husband to change, whether by asking him, such as, please don't eat those potato chips, they're so bad for you, or encouraging him, why don't you work out on the elliptical? It's so easy. Or nagging him or any other method you've tried to get your husband to change. Think of one area where you've tried to get your husband to change and write in the chat box how much on a scale of one to 10 you have succeeded in getting your husband to change. Okay, just, just give me a number, one to 10, where, where one is he hasn't changed at all and 10 is he's changed completely in that area where I tried to get him to change, or zero, okay, make it zero to 10. So I'm seeing zero, zero, seven, wow, two, zero, one, zero, eight, seven, one, one, three, one, 2.5, one, zero, five, three, three, two, one, one, two, one, six, two, five, one, three, two, one, Okay, I'm seeing a, in one area, someone said actually a nine. I think a nine is the biggest number we have, and we have only one nine here. I see only one nine, but again, there's a lot of people. Okay, one person has, actually has a 10. We have one 10. Most of the numbers are between zero and two. So in terms of the first issue we mentioned, the feeling that your husband needs to change and all your efforts, sometimes of decades, have failed to get him to change, the Kesher wife approach is stop trying to change your husband. It rarely works and just leaves you frustrated and resentful. Instead, change yourself and you will see changes in your marriage. A second major issue is communication. The husband doesn't open up and he doesn't share his problems, or the couple simply have nothing to say to each other and boredom sets in. Women are definitely better communicators than men. The Talmud states that 10 parts of speech came down into the world and nine of them were given to women. So men are definitely at a disadvantage. We are better communicators. 
That said, there are ways to help our husbands learn to share their feelings with us. And this is tremendously important in a marriage. There's a psychologist named Dr. Shirley P. Glass who spent her whole career studying marital infidelity. And she discovered something surprising. Affairs do not start from physical attraction. We think, you know, the husband is in the workplace and there is this beautiful, shapely co-worker or secretary or someone or client and that he's attracted, the man is attracted to this beautiful woman because she's, you know, so sexually provocative to him. But Dr. Glass found out that's not how affairs start. Affairs start with conversation. The husband is in the workplace and there's this employee or secretary or co-worker or someone and he starts to talk to her and she's a good listener. So he talks to her more and she's very interested in everything he has to say. She doesn't interrupt him, she doesn't contradict him. So he starts talking to her about more personal things and more personal things and from intimate conversations come intimate relations. So in the Kesher Wife workshop, we learn the skills of active listening and empathetic listening. The better we listen, the more our husbands will talk. This is an important principle. The better we listen, the more our husbands will talk. Active listening involves three principles. Number one, complete attention and eye contact. It means no multitasking. No matter how badly you want to load the dishwasher while your husband is talking to you, don't do it. He's telling you about his day. Sit there across the table from him and listen. Full attention and eye contact. This is the first principle. Number two, no interrupting him at all. Just nod and say, hmm, hmm, so he knows you're listening. And three, when he's finished, repeat back to him something he said in your own words. Again, the three principles of active listening are complete attention and eye contact, no interrupting, just saying mm-hmm mm -hmm, and nodding. And when he's finished repeating back to him something he said in your own words, just so he knows you got it. Now, empathetic listening goes a step further. It requires no invalidating his feelings. You should not say to your husband, after he tells, shares something with you, oh, you shouldn't feel that way. Or, you're overreacting. You must never disagree with his feelings. That's what's going to get him to clamp up. For example, when a wife says to a husband, I think you're feeling so bad because you're misinterpreting what your boss said to you. He didn't mean X, he meant Y. Does the husband feel better when the wife says that? No, not at all. Empathetic listening means validating his feelings. This is how he feels, whether he should feel that way or not should feel that way. This is how he feels. Validate that you got it, that this is how he feels, and he'll share with you more feelings. Now, of course, if you've been married a long time and for years you have been not practicing empathetic listening, then your husband is going to take a while before he trusts you enough to share with you. But the more you practice active and empathetic listening, and again, in the workshop we go into these, this, uh, this tool with more detail, this takes a lot of practice and self-restraint not to interrupt your husband and not to correct him and not to tell him what he should be feeling. The more you do this, your husband will open up and he'll share his feelings with you more and more. A third major marital problem is boredom, where one or both spouses simply loses interest in the marriage. They lose connection. And this is very painful. Rav Shlomo Wolba, that's all, who wrote that he's one of the great Muslim masters of our generation. He passed away a few years ago. He wrote that all simcha, all joy, comes from connection and unification. So of course, a marriage devoid of deep connection will be lacking in joy. What is the Kesher wife? The word Kesher means connection. The Kesher wife is a wife who exercises her free choice to choose connection with her husband. We go very deeply into this, into the four hours of the workshop. Choosing connections, the most important choice you make every day, to choose connection. The Kesher wife values 
connection over being right. She values connection over winning an argument. She even values connection over avoiding financial losses. We talk a lot about this. The Kesher Wife Workshop is based on spiritual concepts rooted in Torah, primarily the concepts of Musr, which is the Jewish system of self-improvement, as taught by the great Musr masters of the last generation. I was in a Musr Vod with Rav Leib Kellerman for 16 years, and it was really life, absolutely life-changing for me to learn the principles of Musr, Jewish self-change, how to, how to really make permanent changes in myself, because what? The only person we can change is ourselves, right? So Rav Wolby taught a concept that has been absolutely life-changing for me, and I want to share it with you. He taught that there are two worlds or spiritual dimensions. One is called the Olam HaYedidut. Look here on the left side of these two columns, in the letters in green. The Olam HaYedidut, or world of connection, is characterized by love, generosity, harmony, joy, optimism, all the goodies. The other world, the Olam Hazarut, or world of estrangement, on the right, is characterized by anger, resentment, fear, sadness, worry, criticism, and all the negative emotions. Rav Wolba taught that at any given moment of our lives, we are in one or the other of these two worlds, but we cannot be in both at the same time. We cannot straddle worlds. Again, in the actual, in part two of the four-part workshop, I spent a lot of time describing this teaching, what I call the spiritual GPS. I'm going to give you an, an abridged version of it now, but I hope that you will join and we'll, I'll be able to give it to you in more detail later. So when, when, we, when we're in a state of connection, we feel happy, peaceful, confident, generous. And when we're in the world of estrangement, we feel critical, angry, depressed, resentful. And that's the world we're in. We're in that world. It's not, we think of these emotions as being in us. No, we are in that world. It surrounds us. So in the chat box now, write approximately what percentage of your waking hours you spend in the world of estrangement, meaning you're feeling critical or angry or depressed or resentful or fretful, you know, fearful, any, any of the, these red emotions. Write that in the chat box. What percentage of your waking hours do you spend in the world of Zarut, the world of estrangement? So I'm seeing 7%, so of course, oh, what percent? So percentage can be, oh, wait a second. Percentage can be up to between zero and 100%, right? So I think these numbers, uh, what are numbers? Okay, here, I'm, and now I'm getting to the percentages. I want you to put a percentage after, because I'm seeing numbers like, like four and two. I think this is maybe from the last question I asked. So uh, let's get to, uh, okay, now the percentages are coming in. I see them. Okay, somebody writes 90%. 50%, 75%, 50%, 30%, 80%, way too many lately, 100%, 85%, 40%, 90%, 65%, 20%, a quarter to half of the day, 15%, most of it, 5 Five percent. I don't know if it's percent. Doesn't have a percentage after it. Ninety percent. Twenty. Eighty-five percent. Hundred percent. Ninety-nine percent. Fifty percent. All the time, unless I'm busy. No. Even when you're busy, at every moment of your of your waking hours, you're in either one or the other of these worlds. Even when you're busy and you're not aware of it, you're either in the world of disconnection or the world of connection. Um, 50%, 70%, 40%, okay. The Kesher wife spends almost all of her life in the world of connection. So now I want to teach you, again, in an abridged form, because we don't have a lot of time, to, to, um, I want to teach you a method to go to the world of connection, the world of happiness and tranquility and love, anytime you choose to go there. 
So I call it this, this the spiritual GPS because it works much the same way as the GPS in your car. For the GPS in your car to work, when you turn it on, the satellite has to find you. It has to identify your location. Similarly, in the spiritual GPS, you have to identify your location. Now, this part is easy. Whenever you're feeling any of these emotions that are in green on the left side, you're feeling loving or generous or happy, confident, peaceful, you're in the Olam Hayyadidu, the world of connection. But whenever you're feeling angry, resentful, fearful, sad, fretful, critical, jealous, or wary, you're in the world of Zarut, the world of estrangement. So it's easy to, to identify which world you're in. Next, with the GPS in your car, you have you have to key in where you want to go. Otherwise, the GPS can't take you there. Similarly, with the spiritual GPS, you have to decide where you want to go, to the world of connection or the world of estrangement. Now, this might seem like the easy part. Don't we all want to be in the happy, loving world all the time? And the answer is no, because we believe that we were endowed with four inalienable rights, the right to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and the right to resent. So if your husband has hurt your feelings or neglected you or criticized you, you have the right to resent. I like to use the term the right to stew. It seems that uh, a lot of younger people don't, understand, don't know that term, stew. It's like you put a stew on the stove and it just simmers and simmers and simmers. So your husband said something critical to you and you just go on and on. Well, he criticized me, he criticized me, he hurt me, what's wrong? It goes on and on. That's the right to stew. Now, far be it from me to tell you you don't have the right to resent or the right to stew. But let me ask you a question. Let's say you saw an ad for a new swimming pool in town. Or let's say it's an old swimming pool, but now it has separate hours for women. And there's a really cheap introductory six-month membership. So you join. And when you get there, you realize why it's so cheap. Like, it's so dirty, it's muddy, it's disgusting. There are dead bugs floating in the water. Are you going to stay there? Are you going to swim in that pool? Of course not. Why not? I mean, you are entitled to swim there. You own the membership. The Olam Hazarut, the world of estrangement, is a dirty swimming pool. So even if you're entitled to be there because your husband hurt your feelings, or he insulted you, or he didn't stick up for you, or he did whatever he did, Whatever your very good reason for being in the Olam Hazarut, the world of estrangement, why would you want to be there? So the, if you decide, I don't want to be here anymore. I mean, I've, had, you know, I've, ju I've just seen these, these percentages that you've given me. If you, spent, if you spend 35 of your time, 40% of your time, 60% of your time, 90% of your time in the Olam Hazarut. Why would you want to be there? It's a dirty swimming pool. It's ick. It's a place of sadness and fretfulness and, and estrangement. So if you decide, this, so step two is, is to choose your destination. Where do you want to go? If you decide you want to go to the Olam Hayyadidut, the third step tells you how to get there. Any act of giving will take you to the world of connection. It's that simple. It really is that simple. So in the map, I've suggested several acts of giving. You can give thanks. You can give a smile. You can give something physical to your husband, like a, a hug or a nice dinner or his favorite treat. Any act of giving will take you there. So I'm going to play for you one of the um, one of the dramatizations, as I said in the in the Kesher wife workshop, we have many of these drama, husband wife dramatizations, in which you might recognize uh, which you might recognize yourself. So please listen. I just looked at our credit card bill for this month. What's this charge at fabulous fashions for? Oh, that's my new dress for Naomi's wedding next week. Are you kidding? You spent that much on a dress? I told you that I have unforeseen expenses in my business this month. I told you that this month we need to economize. I told you that. No, you didn't. 
You told me you had some unexpected expenses, but you never said we had to cut back. How is I supposed to know? You always think you tell me things you didn't tell me. You're such a lousy communicator. You're self-indulgent, that's all. I'm going to my computer to try to figure out how we can pay for that dress you didn't need. So now this wife and I are going to use the spiritual GPS to deal with this situation. First of all, I'm going to ask you, what are you feeling right now? Look at this list in front of you and tell me of all these whole two lists of emotions, which ones best, which words best describe how you are feeling right now? Angry and resentful. Okay, so what does that mean? Which world are you in right now? I'm in the world of disconnection. Okay, so that's step one. Identify what world you're in. Step two, decide which world you want to be in. So you know in America when the police arrest someone, they have to apprise them of their rights. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to a lawyer. I will now apprise you of your rights. You have the right to stew. Do you want to exercise your right to stew? Yeah, I do. Okay, fine. That's fine. You can exercise your right to stew. Nobody is taking away from you your right to stew. How long do you want to stay in that dark pit, that, the, that mucky, dirty swimming pool of the world of Zarut, the world of disconnection? How long do you want to stay there? It's, it's totally up to you. Any hour of your life, you're in the world you choose to be in. So you want to stay in the Olam Hazarut? Fine. How long would you like to stay there? Make a choice. Be conscious about making the choice how long you want to stay there. I'm pretty angry. You know, he had no right to talk to me like that. I think I'll stay here for 15 minutes. Great. Wonderful. Okay. For 15 minutes, our wife here would like to be in the Olam Hazarut. It's now 15 minutes later. So are you ready to go to the world of connection now? Yeah, I am. Okay. Any act of giving will take you there. So I'd like to do a poll now with all the participants, all of you on the webinar. You're going to see a poll in front of you. Any act of giving will take a person to the world of connection. In this case, I've listed for you various types of giving the wife can choose. Please take a moment now to indicate which act of giving, if you were in this situation, your husband is in the other room at his computer figuring out how to pay this credit card bill, which act of giving would you use to get yourself to the world of connection? Okay, so fill in things, just, just check off. Which one? I mean, there are many possibilities. I gave you four. Pick one of the four. I love webinar technology. I love doing polls like this. Okay, please pick right away. We don't want to take much more time on this. Okay, I'm going to close the poll and share the results. So 17% of you said a cup of coffee or his favorite treat. 34% of you said a thank you to give gratitude that he takes care of our finances. 5% of you said you'd give a shoulder massage. And 43% of you the most said an offer to take back the dress. Let's see what our Kesher wife on this dramatization does. And now I'm going to ask our wife here which act of giving would you like to choose to get yourself back into the world of connection? I guess I can apologize. And maybe I can offer to return the dress. Okay, that's great. Apologizing is giving an apology. An offer to return the dress is giving an offer to return the dress. There are two very... Okay, that's enough of that. I'm going to hide the results and let's go back to where we were in our webinar. Um, here we are. So that's a sample of, well, actually one of my favorite tools, the uh, spiritual GPS. It's within the capacity of every woman listening right now to make her marriage not just peaceful, 
but so much more than peaceful, joyful and fulfilling. I've given this Kesher Wife workshop both live and online to over 2,000 women in six continents, to women who've been married for four months and to women who've been married for 40 years and to those in between. And not one woman has told me that she used the methods I teach and they didn't work. For example, the spiritual GPS right now. Like, you may not want to use it because you're very stuck in, but, but I'm right and he's wrong. And we address that. We address that in part two of the Kesha Wife workshop. But if you want to use the tools, you can have a great marriage. Of course, you have to use the methods I teach. You know, you, you can't lament that your washing machine isn't working if, uh, if the dirty laundry is sitting in the hamper and you never exert the effort to load the machine and put in the detergent and set the dials and press the button. The Cash Wife Workshop is entirely practical. It teaches a series of tools. If you use the tools, such as the spiritual GPS and active listening, and there are many, many more, if you use the tools, your marriage will radically improve. I guarantee it. You know, life is like a down escalator. If you're not working hard at going up, you'll be automatically going down. What the Kesha Wife Inner Circle really is, is a spiritual growth group for Jewish women to work on themselves through their marriages. Because every marriage gives you the opportunity, sometimes on a daily basis, to face challenges and to grow and to improve yourself, which again is the reason why your soul comes down into this world. So <clears throat> that's why, together with Jewish workshops, I've created this workshop and series of classes that will teach you practical tools to not only improve your marriage, but to improve yourself. So are you ready to, to begin improving your marriage and yourself today? So write yes in the chat box if you're ready to take your marriage to the next level. Wow, it, it looks like there's so many yeses coming in. Yes, yes, oh yeah, definitely. Thank you, yes, yes. How can I keep going? Absolutely, this was priceless. Thank you so much. So I don't want to wait any longer. As I mentioned in the beginning, we are going to go ahead and give you the opportunity to join uh, Mrs. Riggler and the entire Kesher Wife community. In the past, we've given um, just a few of her classes, and now we are really putting together an entire journey for you to go uh, through class after class, session after session, so that you can, at your convenience, learn all of the tools and techniques necessary to dramatically improve your marriage. So what you'll be getting is, in session one, disconnection, how to stop pushing the buttons that drive your husband away. So learn how to stop pushing the mother button and the top two muster secrets that lead to permanent change in our behavior patterns. Then in session two, why become a Kesher wife? The, the life transforming teachings of the contemporary sage Rabbi Wolbe. Each one of us can choose connection under all circumstances by looking out the right lenses. With the help of the spiritual GPS, which we just had a little sneak peek of today, understand and understanding the power of the Elzar, the force of estrangement, we can define or redefine our perspective, bringing us closer to our husbands. Then in session three, the most important choice you will ever make, and now it's in your hands. So discover how to help an uncommunicative husband communicate and the most important ingredient in a Jewish marriage. Followed by how to become a Kesher wife, the techniques and exercises that will change your marriage. Empower yourself to appreciate that you are capable of changing a negative atmosphere into one of peace, serenity, and connection. Those first four classes are going to give you all of the foundations that you need to really help build from there. Because in session five, we're going to go a little bit deeper and learn how to deal with your husband's criticism, prevent moments of criticism from escalating into battles, and instead learn how to find your inner peace of calm and positivity throughout the toughest times. Then you'll kind of get a sneak peek into your husband's world. Avoid daily frustrations and reconnect with your husband by seeing the world through his eyes. Next, you'll learn how to forgive your husband, release yourself from lingering resentment by learning the tools to forgive your husband and finally achieve peace and calm. 
And in session eight, we like to call it words of water, words of fire. This will give you the practical tools to apply thought and consideration to the words that come out of your mouth, the outflow pipe, so to speak, um, instead of letting them escape through your emotional whims. Then close your marriage business in session nine, put an end to unconsciously calculating everything that your spouse contributes to your marriage, and learn to appreciate every contribution without being constantly bogged down by considering whether or not it is enough. So I did this, this, and this, and now it's his turn to do this, this, and this. We're gonna close that marriage business, we're gonna stop tallying how many, how many points each of us have, and really have a better consideration and a better perspective on things. And finally, how to date your husband, which um, Sari Ochavet also mentioned earlier. Refresh your marriage, renew your bond, and restore your intimate relationship by setting aside the distractions of day-to-day -day life and just focusing on the special relationship between you and your husband. So before I go on, um, I have to tell you about some really exciting bonuses that are coming your way too. In order that you start um, improving your marriage immediately and at a pace that you're comfortable with, we're actually going to give the very first class immediately after signing up today. So you'll get downloadable access to the first class and then each Sunday following you'll receive another class in your email inbox to access in your very own personal membership area. This way you'll have all the tools of your finger, at your fingertips in a simple and convenient downloadable format to listen to and begin implementing at your convenience. We don't Jill, want any time... Can I ask a question? Yeah. Are, I, I'm only seeing this last screen that I had up uh, with uh, about, you know, uh, give a big yes. Are, are all our participants seeing, uh, seeing other screens? Are your screens visible to the participants? Uh, because I'm not seeing any progression of screens anymore. Yeah, it looks like everybody is seeing it. Um, maybe if you go and look, if you click on the... Um, this, the panel, the control panel, you might be able to pull up the screen that's being shown now. I see. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that they're seeing the screen. I, I don't... Yeah, I don't, sure. Yeah, I no, thank you so much for checking yes, in, and I'm glad that everybody is seeing all the technology. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I just want to make sure that it's really clear. Like I said, you will be getting your very first class today, and then each week following, you'll have a new class available to you in your membership area to listen to and download at your convenience so that you don't have to schedule out a specific date or time in your busy, busy lives. You will have all of these tools right at your fingertips to listen to and download at your convenience. Plus, as I mentioned, these really critical bonuses, two one-on-one -on -one phone consultations with Sario Chavid Riggler, personal support and guidance to help you navigate through your personal challenges and find the best solution for your individual situation. Plus, the Kesher Wife Toolkit. This toolkit is a compilation of Sario Chavit Riggler's greatest tools shipped directly to your house. So you will get a binder full of workbooks, giving you the opportunity to implement the these techniques into your daily life and stay connected to the inner circle, both online and offline. The workbooks that are included also go hand in hand with the classes that are offered so that you can be working, like I said, working online by listening and taking notes, but also using the workbook to be able to start implementing these important tools. Plus, a set of Kesher Wife success stories to inspire and motivate you even through the most difficult obstacles in your marriage. And beautifully and masterfully written stories by Sario Chavid Riggler that will open your mind to innovative ways of thinking and an entirely new perspective on your ability to grow and change. Plus, you'll also get the four-part series on the True Self-Esteem Workshop so that you can build a healthy self-esteem and self-confidence to become the best partner you can be and a four-part series um, on the Gratitude Workshop, which will also all be available to you in your personal membership area. And finally, you'll get the first 10 weeks of your, lives, uh, of your sessions sent to you in um, email, and then you'll have the opportunity to join the Kesher Wife Inner Circle live interactive classes with a six-month membership included. So a community of women from around the world giving and gaining consistent ongoing support. Guided by Sario Chavid Riggler with weekly live and interactive webinars, you will get the skills and exercises you need in order to take your marriage to new heights and become the wife you've always wanted to be.
So as you can see, you won't be alone through this journey. You'll have one-on-one -on -one support and personalized solutions to help you dramatically improve your marriage. But most importantly, by investing in yourself and your marriage, you'll discover how to end the cycle of unhappiness, emerge from a difficult relationship rut, and foster an unbreakable connection between you and your husband. You'll get your, be able to get your husband to open up and share and avoid feelings of resentment, frustration, and anger, and staying out of the Olam Hazarut. Break the destructive habits of criticizing, controlling, and accusing your husband, and build a respectful, loving, and unified home. Protect your emotional and physical bond and never feel lonely, unloved, or unsatisfied in your marriage. And finally, replace friction, conflict, and destructive behaviors with loyalty, forgiveness, empathy, and commitment, allowing you to save your relationship and build an unbreakable bond. As I mentioned, we have never offered an opportunity this big or all-inclusive before, but we listen to all of our members' requests, so for the first time ever, we have created an all-encompassing marriage workshop with workbooks, exercises, motivational stories, and personalized support Plus, to make it accessible to everyone, we are offering payment plan options that, you, that best fit your needs so everyone can partake in this one-time chance to transform your marriage alongside a one-of-a-kind mentor. As you can see, the full price of the workshop is $1,597, but we've discounted that to $897. And for all of you who've decided to take the very first step to join us today and attend this introduction, you will get for the next 24 hours the special introductory rate of $697 for the entire 10-week program plus all of the uh, additional bonuses. So you'll have a 10-week program, two consultations with Sario Heaven, the Kesher Wife Marriage Toolkit shipped directly to your house, the True Self-Esteem Workshop, the Gratitude Workshop, and six months membership in the Kesher Wife Inner Circle. So a total of about eight months of full uh, coursework, workbooks, exercises, and personal support, as I mentioned. So let me go ahead and share the link with you now. I can see so many people are asking, how do I get in? How do I get in? I'm going to go ahead and actually put that right into the chat box to make it easier for you. Um, and I'll go ahead and put it right up on our screen. It's www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash connection. And now you can actually go right to your chat box. It's in there. You can copy and paste it into a different browser so that you don't have to leave. You can continue to listen. Um, we've got some Kesher wives, as I mentioned, who will give their stories. We'll take some questions um, throughout the rest of the webinar today. So please feel free to stick on and listen, but go to that site right now, www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash connection, and make sure you grab your spot. Once you hit on the register now button, you will be taken to a special page um, that will help you put all of your information in and you'll be given all of the payment plan options available to you so that you can find one that best fits your needs. Um, otherwise, you can also always give us a call at 718-395-7525 um, or email us at jewishworkshops at jewishworkshops.com. I do recommend that if you're having any technical difficulties or if you just need some help answering some questions, that you actually give us your name and telephone number so that we can give you a call. Oftentimes, our number is busy for the rest of the day um, and probably going forward for a few days. So if you give us your name and telephone number, we would be happy to um, help you out, help you get in and secure your spot. Um, I also ask that when you do go ahead and register, I'd love for you to just come back and put your name and the words I'm in so that I can welcome you and, um, and give you, a, like I said, a huge welcome to the community. We're really going to be excited to have you as a new Kesher wife. So just come on back. You can put your first name or your initials if you're comfortable with that and the words I'm in. So I do see that people are starting to join, and that is so exciting, and I want to go ahead and welcome Rachel, welcome Lori, and welcome Judith. Wonderful. I'm glad to have all of you. Please come back and let us know uh, when you're in so that we can welcome you as well. Um, I do want you to just keep in mind there will be 100 spots available. Um, as I mentioned, that we are offering 
personalized solutions and Sario Chavad's personal time. So um, to, in order to make sure that everyone can get their uh, consultations and the time over the next uh, six to eight months about, uh, we want to make sure that we keep this as an intimate community. So go to the um, www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash connection now and pick your payment plan and register and then just come back and let me know. Um, and we were going to go ahead and get to some questions in a minute. I want to make sure if anyone's asking about these questions. Uh, questions, if you have any questions about what the package includes, please feel free to come back as well and type anything right here into the chat box. Um, this is regular. I'd love to ask some of the questions that are coming in from the audience. Okay, and Jillian, I see that Talia has a message for you. Uh, do you see that on the on yeah, the? Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, so let me get to. I also, I also have questions that um, people sent in prior oh, okay, to the. Okay, great. Prior to do you have workshop. one that you want to start with? Um, yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> Because so, you know, some questions just really like hit me, like, and I felt like, oh boy, I'm so glad they asked so I can answer this question. <sighs> so one person wrote in, I feel that my husband is not the person I should have married. I don't feel connected to him, even though we have a good relationship, support, respect, etc. Can it be changed somehow? Can we reconnect, or does it mean we shouldn't stay together anymore? Rabbi Ezreal Tauber, one of the great rabbis of our of our current times, told me personally when I was talking to him about marriage, he said, no one stands under the chuppah with the wrong person. No one stands under the chuppah with the wrong person. There's no such thing as I shouldn't have married this person. Even if, unfortunately, and I mentioned, you know, women who are married to abusive men, and probably the best path for them is divorce, but even so, that, that you're married to who you need to be married to, because what is the purpose of your marriage? Same as your purpose, for your life in this world. Not to have a good time, not to relax, not to, you know, to have pleasure. The purpose of life in this world is to fix yourself. Your soul comes down into the physical world to fix yourself, to do you have your individual mission, as well as the general mission of of you know of all people, you know, who are all Jewish women like to get married, to have children, but do you have a specific mission and you have a specific tikkun or fixing rectification that you have to do and Hashem who runs the world has given you the exact right husband you need in order to affect that rectification so so you don't feel connected with him fine I, I will teach you so many ways to reestablish that connection certainly you, sh you should not go the route of divorce. Again, the only reasons I find that, you know, just to just to justify divorce are addiction or abuse. Should I answer another question or do you want to say something? Thank you so much. Well, I actually, I want to welcome um, some of our newest members and I'd love to open up Jenna's microphone. She's here with us on the line. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get, get to some more questions. But welcome, Paula. So great to see you. And welcome, Michal. Wonderful to have you as well. Um, let me go ahead and open up Jenna's microphone. I hope that we'll all be able to hear everything okay. Hi, Jenna. Can you hear us? Um, okay. Well, Jenna, we can't hear you, unfortunately. Um, but maybe we will come back and try in a little bit. Well, it's a shame. Jenna is such a she's yeah. she's has, she's been married less than a year. She's one of our great members. Uh, you're, We're gonna go uh, ahead and try again and just here. a little bit. I see maybe. The here. I just unmuted her. I just unmuted Jenna. Jenna. Jenna, can you hear? Can you hear us? Yeah, I um, tried to unmute her as well. So, Jenna, if you could just write into um, the chat box if you're hearing us okay. Maybe we will try coming back in just a few minutes. Um, we also have Anna here on the line. I'd love to go ahead and open your microphone. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of a better, um, better experience here. Let's see. Anna, 
can you hear us? Hello? Okay, we're not having so much luck today, <laughs> but we will come back and Anna if you could also just write in and let us know um, We will definitely come back to both of you. We want to hear your stories um, I love to welcome H welcome glad to see that you are here and in as well um, Anyone that has joined and I missed you please go ahead and just um, put your name and your um, the words I'm in so that I can welcome you Oh, okay, Jenna said you're, you were muted before, so let me try one more time here. Okay. Oh, so Jen, Jenna is saying... Jenna, can you hear us now? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Oh, great, we can hear you. Welcome. So nice to have you. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Well, we would love to hear about your experiences and how the Kesher Wife Inner Circle has um, helped and improved your marriage so far. Yes. Um, so I've only been married for a little over a year, but when I was single, I was actually in Sarah Riggler's um, former workshop for single women called The Ladder, which I know she doesn't do now, but um, that kind of gave me the tip off to join the Kesher Wife Club because I saw how working on yourself with an eye toward relationships was just so helpful. So right after I got married, I joined the Kesher Wife Club, and I've been in it ever since. And I was telling Sarah, the, um, do you have it the other day on our phone call, how much the tools have helped. I mean, I just see my husband doesn't know what I'm working on when I'm working on it, but the the foundational tools that we have in the Kesher Wife Club have just helped me so much in terms of knowing how to speak to my husband, knowing what to say, knowing what not to say, knowing how to process my emotions. Um, and thank God, I, you know, we have a really beautiful marriage. So um, I, I definitely owe a lot of that to the Kesha Wright Club. That's so great. Thank you so much. And do you have like a favorite tool? Um, so I always talk about the tool of the three sins, which is to not criticize, correct, or control. Because, and I heard you mentioning earlier, you know, the mo pressing pressing the wrong buttons with our husband and I just realized that when I kind of take a step back and I don't feel the need to, to micromanage or criticize, you know, my husband just feels more confident, he feels more respected and he loves me more, you know, and we have more a deeper connection. So I just see how that tool, which is, you know, it's hard to always do it, but it's really so effective. That's great, and um, yeah, thank you. And for everyone who's listening, you you learn about those, and within the first four weeks, um, I think even the first class starts talking about the three sins with a C. Um, so that's so wonderful to hear, Jenna. We really appreciate that you are here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Anna, we'll try to open up your mic in a little bit, and I think that we have Lori on the line too. So I'm going to go ahead and get to some of these questions that are coming in. I do want to go and make sure that everything is understood. So let me just go back here for a minute. Um, as I had explained in the beginning, you're going to go ahead and go through 10 weeks of the very first 10 sessions that are um, the first four really get the foundations. They are um, what will help you understand and propel you forward throughout the rest of the 10 weeks. So those you'll, as soon as you sign up, you get your very first session. And then as I mentioned, week after week, you get a brand new session right into your email inbox. You'll have a special personal membership area that you get to log into. Um, and all of those details will come into your email as well. Uh, and so each week you can listen to those or download them at your convenience. You can actually put them onto another device. If you don't always sit in front of your computer, you can put them onto an iPad or an iPod and listen to it on the go. But they also come with PowerPoint presentations, so which you can download as well and you can take notes. Um, but after those 10 sessions, then you'll go straight into six full months membership of the Kesher Wife Inner Circle, which will give you all of the live and interactive classes with Sari Ochavet and all of the other Kesher Wives from around the world. Plus, throughout your journey, you will get um, phone consultations with Sari Ochavet, and you'll also get this amazing package full of a binder with the workbooks, um, plus the success stories, so you can see how other Kesher wives are growing and learning and implementing these tools. Um, you'll have some inspirational stories in there as well, and those will get shipped out uh, 
as quickly as possible. They're coming from Israel, so please be patient, but you will have those um, during your 10 weeks journey. And you'll also have the four-part series of the True Self-Esteem and the four-part series of Gratitude, both in your personal membership area, so you can listen to those as well. And those are going to really help you grow as a person, um, transform your life just on your own, and by tr transforming yourself, as again, um, Sario Chabad mentioned, by transforming yourself, you're really going to be able to transform your marriage. So um, the total price today for everyone who's on the webinar right now and attending, you'll get the entire package for only $697. And um, the payment plan options are available. Let me actually go ahead and see if I can. I'm going to put the link right back into um, the chat box for you. It's www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash connection. And let me see if I can actually take you there so that you can see what... I'm talking about. You'll get to this page with everything listed again so that you, if you have questions, you can see all of the different bonuses, plus you can see all of the classes if you want to see kind of where the tools are that you're getting. But once you hit the register now button, you're going to be taken to um, your checkout page and here you see right here all of the different payment plan options. So if you choose um, you know, to, to break it up, to make it more convenient for you. Not only do you get to break it up and you see how much you pay today, you'll see how much you pay every day, um, and you can you actually have a calendar of when you'll be charged. Every, so you, every, write every that month. Right in. you make that every month, you mean. Exactly. So this, you'll put that right into your calendar. You can see that it's... Person can pay. So the, 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 someone wrote in that, you know, my, my husband saw this charge, he would freak out. But if you are if you choose seven payments, of it's uh, 99 Exactly. Uh, a month. Exactly. And maybe your husband wouldn't freak out. It's it's ninety nine dollars a month. Right. Right. So you can choose whichever one is um, you know more most comfortable for you. And um, yeah, as Ms. Regler just said, ninety nine dollars a month may feel much more comfortable. It's not as huge of an amount right away. But as you continue to grow and learn in the throughout the course, you'll um, have this payment schedule available to you. Someone's asking, do, do, do I have a book that covers this material? The answer is no. I, the whole thing started when, so, when someone get, asked me to write a book on the subject. And um, I went to Art Scroll, my publisher, and they said, well, first start with workshops. And then you'll have material for a book. And when I started with the workshops, I realized that it's so important for it to be live and for it to be an interchange. And also, I want to say that the... <clears throat> the support group aspect of it. Once you join, you become a member of the Kesher Wife community. And the, the I mean, I hope I take some credit that, you know, I'm, I'm giving over really deep and helpful ideas. But the Kesher Wives always say that they get so much from the other Kesher Wives. Every week we have a Kesher Wife of the Week um, <clears throat> on, on our, on the, you know, the live webinar. And by the way, if you can't listen, to the live webinar, the next the live webinar is on Tuesdays at um, at 9 p.m. Israel time. That's 2 p.m. Eastern East Coast of America, 11 a.m. West Coast of America. Uh, I don't know what that is in England. It would be 7 p.m. in England, or South mm -hmm. Africa. You figure it out. But um, the next day you get a recording. Of this, what of what you saw today? It's but it's a video where you see both my powerpoints, and I love the powerpoints because most people are visual learners, so I spend a lot of time giving good images to illustrate the points, and um, and as well as you know the you get the whole thing as a recording. But so every week there's a Kesher wife of the week where one of the members talks about a, her own victory in her, in her in her marriage. And the Kesher wives get such inspiration from each other's victories because this is what it's all about. Somebody wrote in, I saw that when I had, you know, this uh, dramatization that I played for you <clears throat> of using the spiritual GPS where the wife, you know, said, okay, I want to stay in the Olam Hazarut, the world of estrangement for 15 minutes, but then I'm going to choose connection and go to the world of connection. Someone wrote in, it's, this is so hard to do. Well, guess what? Yes, it is so hard to do because anything worth having in life is 
worth working for. And this, so this is a really important point. You're not going to have a great marriage unless you're willing to work. But if you're willing to work, like the Jewish workshops is just offering you everything and laying it, laying it out for you. And especially now, this is Chodesh Elul, before Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, where we're all, all Jews are supposed to be working on ourselves very intensely during this 40-day period leading up to Yom Kippur. And I think a very, very important principle is to be able to say to Hashem on Rosh Hashanah, the Day of Judgment, look, I'm not perfect, and I make a lot of mistakes, but I'm working on myself. Like, I joined this Kesher Wife Club with all these things because I really want to work on improving my marriage and improving myself. And I think that means a great deal to Hashem that you're working on yourself, that you're making this commitment, which I understand is a major commitment of time, energy, and money. But there's no better time to do it than now, during Elul, before Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It's a statement that you know, none of us are perfect, but I'm working on myself. Just think of your, think if you had a child whose room was a mess, and you asked the child to clean up the room, and you come back in half an hour, and they've done a little bit, and the room is still a mess, but they're working on it. You're pleased. They're working on it. That, I think that's how Hashem feels about us when we're working on ourselves, when we make a commitment to work on ourselves, through, especially through our marriages, because our marriages are the number one way that we can affect connection in this world. And connection and oneness is what Judaism is all about. Hey, Jillian. Uh, maybe uh, is Anna back? Is uh, is Anna on the line now? Can we hear from Anna or Lori? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can open them up. And I do want to um, just answer these quick questions that came in. Um, people are asking when are the live classes? So the first 10 weeks of sessions, you'll get um, each class one a week, and those are going to be pre-recorded for your convenience so that you don't have to necessarily take out a time of your day, especially going into um, one of our busiest months. You'll have time throughout the Chagim to start listening um, at your convenience and downloading each of those classes. Once you've gone through all of the first 10 sessions, and these are going to be um, the big you know the biggest tools, the um, foundations, the let's call them master classes to help you get an idea of everything um, that a Kesher wife is and everything that a Kesher wife needs. Then you'll have the opportunity to join for the six months um, in the inner circle, and those are all live and interactive. They're all on Tuesdays. Um, as Mrs. Riggler just mentioned, at 9 p.m. Israel time, 2 p.m. Eastern time in the United States, and then, you know, you can check your times depending on where you are around the world. Um, let me go ahead and see if Lori's here. Uh, I don't see Lori on right now, but let me see if I can get Anna, because I know she's here, and uh, let me see if it'll work this time. Hi, Anna, can you hear us? It's showing me that you're unmuted, but maybe you're self-muted on your own computer, or um, take a look and see if you maybe have a different headset and just write into the chat box for us. Um, <coughs> excuse me. In the meantime, uh, Mrs. Rigler, I know that you had some questions that came in ahead of time. Do you want to go ahead and um, address one of those, or I can take one of the new ones yes. that's coming in? Yes. Yes. So one person wrote in, um, grow it, we're growing apart at the end of our 50s. Each of us has changed and no longer want the same things as we did when we married in our 20s. So that's great because you don't want to be a person who stands still. Thank God you're not the same person you were in your 20s. So you're growing and your husband is growing and changing, and, but you feel like you've grown apart. So the most important thing, and this is such an important tool, is date night. You have to take the time to connect. Life is busy, and we're focused on all these other things. If we have children, we're focused on the children. We're focused on our professions. We're focused on just the running of the house and making money, and, and, all, and, and, our, and our parents are aging, and our other relationships, and all these things. You've got to set aside time for your marriage. One of our mottos, this is really our basic motto. We have a lot of mottos, but this is our basic motto. My marriage is the most important thing in my life. 
my marriage is the most important thing in my life. So you've got to give it the time, even the money. I see a couple of people writing in saying, I, I would love to do it, but I can't afford it, $100 a month for seven months. So I want to tell you that if, you're, if your washing machine broke down, like was irreparable, and you had to get a new washing machine, and even if you couldn't afford it, you would get a new washing machine. You'd figure out how to do it because you can't live without a washing machine, right? There are things, if you have a, if you have a, a plumbing leak, you know, something sprouts a big leak and you call the plumber and it's a very expensive repair, but what are you going to do? You can't live without running water. Your marriage should be the most important thing in your life. I understand that, you know, $100 a month is above the budget of some people, but Again, we, we all look, we all spend money on the things that we find really important. So, if your marriage is the most important thing in your life, then somehow you, I hope that you'll find a way to do this. I don't have any books to offer, but in terms of date night, so it means taking off time once a week. The, uh, optimally, you should have one date a week, um, if, uh, minimum twice a month, and then you. I mean, I have rules which, which I teach, you know, about what you're not allowed to talk about. You're not allowed to talk about business, finances, problems, or children. You know, that's not what date night is about. Date night is connecting to your husband. And we have this, we've, <laughs> Julian put together a beautiful booklet of um, the date night questions, the things to ask. So again, I can't, I'm not going to go into it now. It's not the time. But that's one of the many, um, one of the many classes you'll be getting, how to date your husband. And that will reestablish connection even when you have grown apart. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going through and seeing there's so many more questions coming in. So I do want to make sure that we're trying to get to as many as possible. Um, Mrs. Riggler, can you just explain to us why it's so important to get these first um, foundation classes under our belts? You know, why it's so important to not just jump right into um, the inner circle and the classes that are going on currently, but why it's important to start hearing, um, you know, the, the foundation? Good. Well, I'm glad you asked because th this is something that I think I convinced Jewish workshops they have to do this. We've had Many, um, cam we've had campaigns where people just joined and they were sent the four basic workshops, but they, did, but they didn't want to listen to them because they wanted to get on live right away. And I understand the live classes are great and interactive, but you need the foundation. These are the tools that you will use. And people, when they, like Kesha Wife of the Week, she'll say, somebody just said, um, um, Jenna referred to the three C's. She, she stopped committing the three C's. And somebody wrote in, well, what are the three C's? I, I can't give over, you know, we're talking four hours of the basic workshop, plus another six hours of other, uh, almost four hours. First, the first uh, webinar is uh, a little sh is shorter than an hour, it's like 45 minutes, and the next one is 55 minutes, so they're almost four hours. Plus six more hours, I can't give it to you tonight. But, um, Without knowing what the tools are, you can't use the tools. And the tool, it's all about the tools. It's all about using the tools. You cannot build a house without tools. You cannot build a Jewish home without tools. So, um, so and the, like, I'll give you an example. The, one of the uh, classes you're getting is how to live with a critical husband. A husband is who's critical, who is not abusive, but who is critical. In other words, he's not in control. He's not trying to control money to your money, your time, your relationships. But he's but he's critical. He's critical because his parents were critical, or because he because you know because his boss is giving him a hard time, or because he he has a sleep apnea and he doesn't get enough sleep at night and he's always sleep deprived. There are many reasons. I give tw in this class. I give. 19 reasons why your husband is criticizing you and only one has to do with the fact that you actually did anything wrong. It's very, very important to get that. Without that, it's always this constant like, oh, my husband's criticizing me. I don't know how to deal with it. But once you get, listen to this class, we have what we call duck oil formula. Cash your wife duck oil formula. How to spread this duck oil formula on yourself like a duck doesn't get wet when it rains or when they're swimming because it has this duck oil that puts on you. So you have to know with a critical husband, you're not going to get him to change. Yes, the truth is, over time, yes, he will become less critical. 
But he'll never get to the point where he's never critical. That's not going to happen. But you can change to, to the point where his criticism doesn't bother you because you know that has, it really has nothing to do with you. So, and that's really an important, important tool to learn. So before you plunge into the live classes, you have to have all this background material is so important. These are life-changing tools. Excellent. Thank you so much for addressing that. And um, it does look like Lori's here on the line. But Lori, if you can tell us just um, maybe what you come into the chat box and let us know what initials or name you put in. I'm not seeing you here. Um, we'd love to be able to hear from you, though. So just come on in and let us know Jill, uh, you know, what that is. is. Somebody's asking about, somebody says, my husband and I have a very good marriage and get along very well. My biggest problem is lack of interest in sex. Does the workshop deal with that? So I, I, I didn't notice that the Kesha Wife in the Bedroom, the three-part series that I gave recently, I, di I didn't see that that's one of the bonuses or one of the basic uh, things that we're not, we're right. not offering that. Right. That's not in this particular package, but if it is something um, that somebody's interested in, please just leave your name and telephone number right in the chat box, and we'd be happy to um, speak to you over the phone and find the best uh, best workshop for you. Okay, great. Um, and welcome, Miriam. Wonderful to have you. I think I've missed a few of our newest members. I'm sorry. Please come back and let me know um, that you're in if I missed you. And if you are um, having any technical difficulties um, with registering or have any specific questions, please just come back and put your name and telephone number in. We will try to give you a call as quickly as possible. Um, depending on the time and how late it gets, you may start getting calls right away. So just uh, keep, an, keep an ear out for the phone. Um, otherwise, we will certainly try to get to you as soon as possible within the next coming days. We want to make sure that you uh, not only are able to get your spot, but you're also able to get your special discount for joining us today. Um, Mrs. Riggler, we did have a question um, come in a little bit earlier. How do you address um, issues intellectually without damaging the emotional intimacy of the relationship? So there are times for that. Date night is certainly not time to deal with. Your, I think you're asking about problems. So there's a problem. So how do you like discuss the problem? You have a problem with a child. How do you discuss what to do? So there's a time for that. And the more you learn to, to listen to your husband, give him the space to, to express his, his opinion without attacking his opinion, so you listen to it, hopefully he will listen to your opinion. This can take place, but the problem is with, um, with most marriages is we spend so much time on the uh, intellectually addressing issues that we don't, we sacrifice the emotional intimacy. The emotional intimacy can only come through something like date night, where we usually, I recommend you go out, even if you can't afford to go out for dinner, or you live in a place where there's no kosher, good kosher restaurants. You can go out, take a walk in the botanical gardens, um, take a, you know, uh, just go out for a, for a glass of wine or a, or a dessert or a cup of coffee together. You go out and you just focus on each other. The emotional intimacy is is so important, and it's also, by the way, you know, intimately tied with intimacy. <laughs> you know that Cash Your Wife in the Bedroom had to do was three series, three uh, a three workshop series that I gave on 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 the on the intimacy issues, but um, emotional intimacy. Is part of is has has to take priority. We we spend so much time solving pro, pro, solving problems with our husbands, and 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 no wonder the marriages become dry and lacking in joy and excitement. Yeah. Um, speaking of different tools and things that are going to help us, it looks like um, we have a question. This three C's that Jenna had mentioned. Um, can you just give us a, a little sneak peek or an idea of what those three C's are? What those are to avoid? And no, you um, know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to do that because the very first, uh, the very first of the of the master classes addresses that, and I I do it in a way. You know that, like I do it in context. I I can't if I take it out of context, 
you won't get the point and and you know the listeners we I'm speaking now of the listeners you won't get the point and it will not help so you no know, there are some things I spend so much time giving the context and especially with this the three C's which I'm not going to go into what they are uh, we have so, so many dramatizations husband wife dramatizations it's my husband who plays the husband in all these dramatizations and my friend uh, Rachel plays the wife so um we have so many dramatizations that are very effective that I, I just, I, I'm not going to give it over without the context. Sorry. Okay, well, in or <laughs> I guess in answer to the question, the three C's are um, what we go over in that very first class. And as I mentioned, once you register, you get that very first class right away. So uh, you can go ahead and learn a lot more about what to avoid and how to use the tools that we're given. I want to address a question. I've seen two different people have asked uh, ver different versions of the same question that their husband is very controlling financially. Does that mean he's abusive? You know, one person said that, you know, she just, he has the skills to do it and she doesn't, like, I guess, to budget and, you know, to live by a budget. And uh, this other uh, uh, participant is asking uh, that my husband happens to be very controlling, especially financially, but claims that the nature of his business doesn't allow it to be any other way. He works with two brothers and two sisters. So when we talk about abuse having to do with power and control, it's across the board. An abusive husband is not just controlling financially. He's controlling of your time. He's controlling of your relationships. He doesn't like when you spend time with your family. He doesn't like you to have your own outlets, your own um, you know, work outside the house or hobbies or, or things where you or friends. If he's just controlling financially and he's not controlling in other areas, then you don't have to worry about it. But again, if you have questions about whether your husband is abusive, you should ask, you should read the book, I'm So Confused My Being Abused. But just financial control does not constitute abuse. Great, thank you. And you know what, um, Mrs. Ziegler, I am seeing a few other questions also talking about intimacy and um, that being one of the biggest you know, questions or biggest struggles in the relationship. So I'm going to go ahead and do something a little off and I'm going to put it in and add that to your package. Um, it is clearly something oh, yeah. that our wives yeah. need. Yeah, our wives. <laughs> I, yeah you I know was, what? Was, I'm, I'm seeing was, wives, I'm seeing wives um, right in here and this is, you know, a big question. It's a big, uh, it's a big uh, issue or a hot button issue. And Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in. I will make a note of it. Um, once you register, it won't get to you um, immediately, but you can be on the lookout and it will be in your personal membership area within the next day or two. I'll make sure I'll make sure of that. I'll make sure that you can go ahead and get that as well because I don't want you to miss out and I can see that that is um, definitely something that is a necessary addition to today's package. So I'm glad that you spoke up. I'm glad you're here with us. And just for that, I'm throwing in another bonus. Jillian, Jillian you're being bold enough to add the, the three-part uh, series of Cash Your Wife in the Bedroom. Can I be bold enough to ask you to also send them when you send the package in the mail? in the snail mail, the beautiful booklet that uh, I put together and you did the graphics for of uh, the Jewish Couples Intimacy Booklet, which is a collection of um, statements from going back to Talmudic sta uh, sages up to contemporary sages like the, uh, like the Stipler Gaon and everyone in between, the Rambam, the Ramban, and uh, st statements about intimacy in our uh, uttered by our sages and the importance of it and how it must be done and how the, you have the, how the husband has to take into consideration the wife's feelings and the wife's pleasure. And this is the only thing we put out in the Kesher Wife, in the whole Kesher Wife system that is really for your husband. Okay, but, and, but it's couched, it's like not statements from me, not statements from you, not statements from a psychologist, statements of our sages. I think it's, it's really great. And uh, can, can that please be put in with the uh, with the package sure. going out. I'm email. making a note right now before these boxes get taped up. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and throw that in too so that you have that extra pamphlet. Great. Great.
Thank you. Um, I see Anna writing in. Anna, I'm sorry that we are having some troubles. Let me see if I can open your microphone now, see if we can hear you really quick. Um, it looks like our time is running out, so I would love to be able to get you on the line. Uh, let's see. Can you hear us now, Anna? Yeah. So I know you're trying to reach us, and I'm glad that you can hear. <laughs> um, but your microphone is unmuted on our end, so um, we just still can't hear anything. Anna, let me go ahead. I'll try and actually get in touch with you maybe a little bit later tomorrow. Maybe we can record something. I, I know you have such a beautiful story um, and such inspirational things to share. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a call and try to um, work something out with that. Thank you so much for being here, and I'm sorry that we're not hearing anything live on the line. Um, but like I said, as we're closing up here and we're running out of time, if anyone has any other questions about the package or program itself, please feel free to go ahead and put those questions in right now so that we make sure we answer those um, before we close up. And if you're having any trouble uh, registering on your own, please put your name and telephone number in. Once we close up the webinar, I won't have uh, any opportunity to get that information from you. Um, you know, we close it up and then everything kind of disappears. So if you need some help, please put your name and telephone number in. If you are ready and you want to grab these extra, extra bonuses that we just threw in within the last five minutes, um, you'll get an entire workshop on intimacy put up into your personal membership area. That's going to be a three-part series, plus the packet in your um, big box of um, your tools, your toolkit, and your packets. That'll be in there too. Um, so just go to www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash connection. I'm putting it in one more time so that you can copy and paste it into a new browser. You don't have to stop listening. You can go ahead and put it into that new browser. Um, and I do want to remind everyone that as the spots are filling up, we really can only hit um, 100, uh, 100 new people and the extra special discount for everyone who's attending is also going to run out. So please, I, I would urge you to go now. Um, you know, you, you deserve this for yourself, for your marriage. And as, um, you know, we've said throughout the evening, when you learn these tools and start implementing them and really changing your perspective and the way that you think, feel, um, you know, kind of your outflow pipe, your entire marriage and everything around you will end up changing and transforming as well. So, uh, Mrs. Rigler, if you see any other I, questions, I one more question. Mm -hmm. First of yeah, all, yeah, I was just going to say, if you want to go ahead, about, somebody's asking about abuse. If your husband is abusive or you ex suspect that he's abusive, please read the book. I'm so confused. Am I being abused by Lisa Tversky? Okay, this workshop is not for you if your husband is really an abuser. Um, somebody asked, do you think it's a problem if our husbands know we are participating in this program? Does it take away from our efforts? No, I think that you, he should know that you're participating in this program. One of the people who wrote in before the workshop said, uh, my husband feels he's not the priority, rather just like another member of the household for whom I take care of. So. When you, your husband knows that you've joined this program because your marriage is so important to you and you're really working the program and he's going to see right away that you're working the program. After the very first webinar that you, you're going to have the recording of that will tell about what the three C's are and you'll have a chart that you have to chart where the body, we have all kinds of Musser techniques that we use, your husband will notice right away that you are working on improving your marriage and it will make him so happy. Definitely let him know that, you know, he doesn't have to see your chart. I talk about where to keep your chart um, if, if you don't want him to see the chart, but he definitely should know that you're in the program and you're working on your marriage because this is your priority. It'll make him feel terrific. Great. Thank you so much. And um, as I see, um, you know, us kind of coming to a close here. I would love to just um, turn it over to you, Mrs. Riggler, and ask you to uh, to leave us with um, some closing words, if you can. There's one question I see. Somebody's asking if they can join at a later time. So do you want to answer that, Jillian? 
Yeah, um, right now this is actually if you choose to join at a later time, the price will be going up after um, the next 24 hours. So I would recommend that you join as quickly as possible. Um, later than that, you know, in several weeks, this package in particular won't be available. Um, so if this is something that you're interested in, the full 10 weeks, um, plus all of these additional amazing bonuses, plus the personal consultations and um, the extra classes on self-esteem and gratitude and intimacy, then this is the this is the time, unfortunately. Um, if this is something that you can't commit to right now, um, please always be in touch with us at Jewish Workshops at JewishWorkshops.com. We will do our very best to cater to your needs and your time commitments um, and try to help find a workshop uh, that is fitting for you at that time. Okay, so you want me to, to end the workshop, end our, our evening? Yeah. With our, for me, for me, it's evening. For those of you in the Western Hemisphere, it's still daytime. Um, with with one final idea, one final idea is that sometimes, or should I say, often, wives not only have problems, and some of you have written in specific problems, which I can't address today. I mean, this is you know, <laughs> this is an introductory workshop. The the resistance to the problem is half the problem. In other words, the feeling of, my husband shouldn't be like this. You know, I have this problem that my husband is X, Y, Z, and my husband shouldn't be like this. This is part of the problem. Your resistance to the fact that your husband is presenting you with these challenges. All the challenges in your life come to you from Hashem for your benefit. Okay, and this is something we're working on right now. This is our, our Elul Avoda, our, every, every year... Uh, in the Kesher Wife um, webinar, the Kesher Wife Inner Circle, we do a, an Adar Avoda during the month of Adar, the month of Purim, and we do an Elul Avoda. And this year's Elul Avoda is, rec is learning to see Hashem in your life because all wrong action comes from forgetting God. Seeing Hashem more in your life and seeing that he, if it all benefits you. So I'll just, I, I really will share this idea because uh, because you will not be getting on live during the month of Elul. We, we learned a concept making a verb of the word Jupiter to Jupiter. What's the concept? We never realized there's this big planet. The biggest planet in the solar system is Jupiter. It's, it has more, it weighs more, it's bigger, has more mass than all the other planets in the solar system put together. Like, so what? It was 300 times the size of Earth. So what? You know, this big planet Jupiter, what, what does that have to do with me? It has nothing to do with me. Well, I learned from a wonderful book by Dr. Gerald Schroeder, who's a, a religious physicist, a book called um, God According to God, that the planet Jupiter, because it's so big, it has such a strong gravity, that there are all these comets and meteors that are flying around, you know, flying around the universe, flying around the solar system, if they hit planet Earth, they would create tremendous destruction. In the past, you know, when a, when it has, when a meteor has hit planet Earth, it can, it, can, it can keep the rays of the sun out and stop photosynthesis for six months. It's really, really catastrophic. So Jupiter acts like a giant vacuum cleaner. Because it has such strong gravity, it just zoops up all these comets and meteorites that could really hurt planet Earth, and they go right into Jupiter. And it last happened just a few years ago. It was all captured on the Hubble telescope where the Shoemaker-Levy comet was flying around and, ju and Jupiter just sucked it in. The, the point of where Jupiter, it first it broke it up, and then it sucked it in. And the, the biggest piece of this comet made an impact site on Jupiter bigger than planet Earth. So the point is, there are so many things in our life that God put there deliberately for our benefit. And in our last live webinar, that's why I'm sharing it with you because you weren't on that webinar and you're not going to get that webinar. Maybe next Ella will do it again. But we asked the, the Kesher wives to Jupiter problems in their marriage. To Jupiter means to recognize that God put it deliberately in your life for your benefit. So people were talking about, you know, so the question of having an ADA, 
ADHD husband who can't keep a job or having a husband who's less religious than you or having a husband who's a workaholic and you never see him. So we, so we talked about it. Okay, I, I put it out to our Kesher wives who are so well trained because they've had all these tools. How do you Jupiter a problem like that? And they were putting in tremendous ideas of how to recognize that Hashem put this problem in my life for my benefit. So that's what I want to leave you with. That all the problems in your marriage have been put there by Hashem deliberately for your benefit. And hopefully you will join me on this journey of learning how to appreciate you know, the challenges in your marriage and appreciate your husband more and, you know, and really rekindle the, the, the love and connection in your marriage. I really hope you'll join me. Thank you so much. That was really, really great. Um, ex extremely inspirational to me, so I hope everyone else feels the same. Um, I am going to go Hi. ahead and wrap things up. I have Anna here. Yay, we figured Hello. it out. Hello. Do you got Hi. me now? Do you hear me? <laughs> well, we hear you perfectly. Thank oh, you so much. Oh, my God. Thank God. Here. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. I've been trying for the past four times. I've got to get a hang of technology. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> I just want to quickly say I... First of all, I, I'm thrilled to be on. Finally, um, I've been a member since 2013, and I've all I feel there's always more to learn and apply. And just being a cashier wife, um, you you're, you get constant support. Um, this coming October, I'm going to be married for 25 years, um, and we're. We're complete opposites, just to let you know. I mean, he's got ADD big time, which means procrastination, a little bit of laziness. Um, but you know what? I learned to embrace it. I've learned to um, be more empathetic, to realize poor guy has got to run back and forth, back and forth into the car to get the car keys again. He forgets his wallet. But because I'm such a fireball, as you could probably hear from my voice, he learns to calm me down. I mean, I learn now to just speak sometimes more slowly, not on this webinar, because I know we all have to get off soon. Um, but I've just learned so much more to get a balance in our marriage. And um, you can also use these wonderful tools with your children, because it teaches you to be more calm, more understanding, see things from their light, realize that God put everything in there for a reason. He's a huge test for me, but I embrace the test. I move forward. I use the three C's all the time. Now, I have a special occurrence that I wanted to share. I think Sarah's going to get a real kick out of this one. Um, <laughs> it happened at the Jewish Community Center here in La Jolla. They asked me to teach a relationship class. I offer them to teach a health class because I'm a certified healthcare practitioner. And they heard that I was part of the inner circle. So they said, how would you like to teach a relationship class? Just do like a quick demo of what you know. <laughs> and I said, okay. So I thought I was going to get a bunch of you know women like us that are married. They gave it to seniors. They wanted me to teach seniors. And I thought, oh, wow, what am I going to teach these guys? But you know what? They had two elderly couples and a lot of other ones, I think either they they were widowed or singled and they loved everything I gave them charts with the inflow and the outflow the Olam Hayidi dude and the Hazarut it was unbelievable and so at the end I gave them a survey and I said please fill it out and let me know what you most valued and here's some of the things they said one of them says they learn to change yourself instead of changing others the importance of Shalom Bayit and understanding the other person better I was thrilled. I thought, wow, this was just like a 30-minute talk with charts and everything. And you'd be happy to know that my little 11-year-old daughter helped me put the charts together. We did it the old-fashioned way with cut and paste, inflow and outflow and the olama yadidu and all that. And um, she says, Mom, you're going to have to learn PowerPoint at some time. <laughs> she says, I said, well, you know, I said, they're seniors. I don't think they're even that advanced. So I, I soon just left it at that. But it was amazing. So your words of wisdom are going a long way. So um, I just want to let you know that you're helping me to help the world too. And it was just a fun class at the Jewish Center. And they, they, they so much enjoyed and got so much out of it because you do have to change yourself. And they learned that. And there are seniors learning this still. And there's always more to learn. So, And we did the words of water and fire and too, and they learned that as well. So thank you so much for all your teachings. It was just a blessing to the world in every which way. So thank you. Oh, and I so love much. it. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really love hearing that. Yeah, well, I hope you come down and visit again. We'll go back to that same place. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. I'm glad we finally connected. All right. Yeah, thank you so much, Anna. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye. You too. Oh, well, I... 
I can't even think of any words that are better than that to end the day. So thank you so much to everyone who was here. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedules to be here with us. Thank you so much, Mrs. Riggler, uh, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here and to introduce all of these amazing concepts. If anyone has any other questions or would like help registering, I'm going to go ahead and close the webinar, but I will, um, well, I'll just turn off our microphones and leave it open for another minute or two so that you can get your name and telephone number in here if you need any help registering. Otherwise, you can always reach us via email or telephone number. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much to everyone here, and thank you, Mrs. Riggler. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.